All right. So uh, yeah. So just starting off with a bit of that. Yeah. There we go. <laughs> Starting off with a bit of background here about chemotherapy-induced ner uh, peripheral neuropathy, or uh, CIPN. It's a common side effect of chemotherapy, uh, which is related to damage of the nerves outside of the brain and the spinal cord. It generally presents as uh, sensory symptoms, uh, such as numbness, tingling, and pins and needles, appearing in a stocking and glove distribution affecting the hands and the feet, uh, with more severe symptoms extending further proximally past the wrist and past the ankles. Uh, CIPN affects up to 40% of roughly 32 million cancer survivors worldwide and uh, has the following functional consequences. So fine motor deficits affecting the hands and then symptoms in the feet resulting in gait and balance deficits, uh, which are associated with an increased falls risk to the tune of 1.8 to uh, 2.67 times that of survivors uh, without neuropathy. There's presently no recommended intervention for CIPN. However, there have been suggestions of benefits related to exercise training in other neuropathy populations, namely diabetic neuropathy. So accordingly, in this context, uh, the aim of the present study is to investigate the impact of exercise-based rehabilitation for cancer survivors with persistent CIPN, uh, extending post-treatment, uh, using a comprehensive battery of assessments. And so we did this using a single group test, retest, uh, retest design, where each patient served as their own control. So we assessed patients uh, at baseline before an eight-week waiting period, after this eight-week control period, and before an eight-week exercise intervention, and then following the eight-week exercise intervention. Including patients where uh, they had to be at least three months post-treatment with known neurotoxic cancer treatments and present CIPN symptoms affecting function in some way, shape, or form, otherwise known as National Cancer Institute grade two symptoms. Additionally, uh, patients had to be cleared to participate in a structured exercise program by either their treating clinician or by their general practitioner. Uh, so the exercise intervention was eight weeks of, uh, of exercises conducted three times a week for an hour. They were split into roughly uh, equal divisions of cardiovascular exercises, resistance training exercises, and balance training exercises, with uh, each conducted at a moderate hard intensity, which was governed using the uh, Borg rating of perceived exertion scale. Uh, these exercises were conducted half in clinic under the supervision of a qualified exercise physiologist, and they were individualized to individual patient function and fitness, and the other half of the exercises were prescribed by these exercise physiologists and then conducted at the patient's home. Uh, the assessments that were assessed at each of the three time points, CIPN symptoms, both patient reported using the EORTC CIPN 20 instrument, uh, objectively using the total neuropathy score, and then we also looked at objective neurophysiologic parameters, both in the upper and the lower limbs, uh, so median nerve uh, axonal excitability studies uh, in the sensory and motor components of the median nerve, and then also sural and tibial nerve conduction studies in the lower limb. Additionally, we looked at mobility using the six-minute walk test, standing and dynamic balance using postural sway and the five-time sit-to-stand test, quality of life questionnaire SF36, and then also disability as well using a questionnaire uh, targeted for neuropathy patients. We contacted 71 patients, enrolled 35, and 29 patients uh, completed our intervention and were available for analysis. And this is the data that I'll present uh, right now. So again, just to reorient you guys to the uh, design of the study. So we have between time points one and two, we have our control period, and between time points uh, two and three, we have our eight-week exercise intervention. So essentially what we're looking at here are significant decreases in uh, patient-reported and objectively assessed uh, neuropathy symptoms pre- to post-exercise with no significant changes from pre- to post-control. Similarly, we saw significant improvements in quality of life, again, pre- to post-exercise, no significant changes pre- to post-control. Similarly, improvements in standing balance uh, with the eyes open, pre- to post-exercise, no significant changes pre- to post-control. And then also significant improvements in dynamic balance and mobility, again, pre to post exercise, no significant changes pre to post control, and also decreases in disability, again, pre to post exercise, no significant changes pre to post control. Uh, what we didn't see were any neurophysiologic changes, so either in the upper limbs uh, nor the lower limbs. We also didn't see any improvements in standing balance in conditions with the eyes closed. So essentially, to, to summarize these data, this is, uh, this is quite promising in terms of the, uh, with respect to the ability of exercise training to, uh, to rehabilitate symptom burden, function, quality of life, and, uh, and disability in patients with neuropathy. However, the, uh, the mechanisms are still a bit unclear, uh, especially given the lack of neurophysiologic changes. 
Uh, so we have a couple of hypotheses here. The, uh, the first is that we may simply be observing functional adaptations to established and unchanged nerve damage. And the, uh, the improvements in symptom burden may simply be secondary to generalized quality of life improvements, which we saw in this study and have also been reported in previous studies of cancer survivors. Uh, this functional uh, adaptations hypothesis would also explain the improvements in standing balance and why these only occurred with the eyes open and not with the eyes closed, as the majority of exercise training was conducted with the eyes open, and so thus it would make sense that the uh, majority of the benefits would be seen in conditions with the eyes open and not with the eyes closed. Uh, the other hypothesis is that neurophysiologic changes may have occurred but were not detected by our uh, axonal excitability studies and our nerve conduction studies. Uh, these are only designed to uh, detect, as the, as the name suggests, axonal uh, function, changes in axonal function. And so there could have been changes in, uh, in parameters such as a small fiber functioning, cutaneous nerve fiber density that did occur uh, but were not detected by our uh, battery of assessments. Uh, so essentially, in conclusion, uh, this is quite promising data uh, that, uh, that justifies, the, uh, justifies the undertaking of a larger, uh, a larger trial, a larger randomized controlled trial to both confirm the observed benefits and also try to elucidate some of the uh, neurophysiologic mechanisms of the benefits that we observed here. So, thank you. Thank you very much, Matt. Does anybody have any questions? to do that exercise just in um, people who don't have cancer and haven't had chemotherapy but are a similar age, would that exercise also result in an increase in dynamic balance and mobility and yes, even yes. quality I mean, of life? Yeah, so I mean, so that's the, uh, that, that, that is the, the question, is especially with respect to the lack of neurophysiologic changes, is, is, is this a specific therapy for uh, survivors with neuropathy or, as you said, you know, exercise, if you put someone who wasn't on a balanced training program and put them on a balanced training program, you're going to see improvements in, in balance and functional parameters. With the training that they were prescribed, was that in line with the COSA guidelines that have been recently released or was it more individualized, patient-focused? Uh, so, so both, actually. So it, uh, it meets the uh, COSA guidelines and also the ASCO guidelines, uh, but was also included some targeted balance exercises that were specific to their sensory losses and their, and their feet. So. Anybody else? I have a quick question. It's kind of related to Anna's question. Um, I just wondered if you had any information from the patient's prior to their cancer diagnosis, what levels of exercise they did and whether or not that would make a difference to the effects here? Uh, so it, the, the encouraging bit about this was it was our, the activity levels at baseline were quite varied. Uh, so we had the age range was from 34 to 84, I believe, and the 34-year-old was extremely active, uh, quite fit, uh, and then we had patients who had never exercised before in their life, and uh, all of those patients, uh, we consistently saw benefits in function and also symptom uh, burden as well. Thank you very much. Yeah.